Good morning, everyone. Welcome to, um, I was going to say sunny Saunderton. Uh, I will have. For those of you who are here, you realise actually I'm lying, it's not sunny. But apparently, we're, for the first time, we're on Facebook Live. So if you could pretend it's really sunny. Uh, it's always sunny in Saunderton. It's a fantastic place to come. So um, a warm welcome to you all. I'm going to do a very brief introduction. Uh, my name's Ian Mackey. I'm business support manager at Bucks Business First. So if you've got any questions about your business generally, uh, grab me. I've met a few of you before. And um, we can sit down at some time and go through and let's find out how we can help you. Uh, but my role really is not to talk about that. It's to start looking at what we're doing with going into digital and to get them to make the first steps into digital. Now, digital is fundamentally important to every business out there these days. Um, but I think what I will say is, two other people will talk about digital. I'll say it's really more than just digital that makes a business work. And where BBF come in is help you with introductions like this, but also in a number of other ways, helps to go the right direction, doesn't it? Um, with the business. Um, Plus Business First has got a lot of different facilities which you can call upon to help you move your business forward. Um, there's a whole list of them here, and I'm not going to go through them all. That's not what today's about. But if you want to get networking, I saw a couple of people make swapping cards this morning, which I think is fantastic. A little bit more of that is great. We can all work together and learn from each other and help each other. There is workshops, so more like this, but also much more um, face one-to-one -one workshops where people will give you specific advice, perhaps from other members who can help you. Um, there's a lot of information which goes out in our newsletters. Um, <coughs> they may seem like they appear quite frequently. It's only what you think. It's not really what's happening, trust me. Um, the information in there is well worth picking up, scanning through. It won't all be relevant to you, but little bits of it will be relevant to you. Uh, particularly in a few months' time, you'll be seeing some information coming through with regard to some grants. They won't be applicable to everybody, but it's worth having a look at, because anything which can help you move things forward is going to be of value to your business and help the business in Buckinghamshire. Um, We've got three hubs which you can use. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the hub here in Saunderton, I'm happy afterwards to take a little walk around and we can show you around. But you've got meeting rooms you can have there, and there is a drop-in uh, area with free Wi-Fi, and you can use that. Um, and with your PDF card, you can just pop in and um, use that at any time. So that begs the first question which I will ask everyone here. Is there anyone here who is not a member of Bucks Business First? Okay. We're going to make exceptions for the speakers. Um, at this point, I would normally create a victim who I will call upon and explain what we do and see how we can help them. Um, how can I make a victim of one of our speakers today? That seems a bit harsh. Um, really, I'll move on to our new victim, um, Michelle. What we're going to do is take a couple of looks at starting in digital with two speakers. Then we're going to have a QA and a and then we're going to do some networking. I don't want this to be too formal. If you have any questions, fire away. We'll have some gaps for formal questions where we can all hear the answer. There are some breaks where we can have some informal questions. But um, please get stuck in. Um, so first of all, I was in it asks not to introduce uh, Michelle too formally, um, but when I saw her bio, I thought it was worth probably mentioning a couple of things. Um, Michelle has started a couple of companies. She's working with Do It Digital as director, and she started on a Business Saturday program um, to encourage businesses to get together and help business and get other, uh, let's say, consumers understand what business is all about. Um, but the bit which interested me was her leisure time um, that sounds like she's quite a superwoman until I read the bit which I loved. She goes to her local pub. So, Michelle, a woman of my own heart, I'll let you go ahead. There we go. All the things, you have to talk about the pub. I'm sorry, but they told me to be formal. I didn't want you to say. Okay. 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 Okay.
then you need to build a site, uh, you need to host a site, and then you need to support a site. Sounds very complicated, but actually you can do the whole lot in, in basically one place. So getting a domain name. When you're starting your business, or if you've been going for a while, I would say if you want to have a website, you should get on this as soon as possible. So domain names are kind of getting gobbled up all the time. Um, when you, in an ideal world, when you start your business, the first thing you should do, even before you, you register in a company account, is go and check what domain names are available for you. Um, because you really want something that's kind of really obvious to your customers, that kind of feels sort of right. If your domain name is totally different to your company name, it's going to be quite hard for people to find you. So I'd go, go straight away. Um, domain names do tend to sell fast. Um, and actually, there are, there are businesses out there that just track new businesses being set up on companies' house and then go and buy up the domain names so they can then sell them on at a profit. So, very important to scale, very important to get your domain name early. Um, the price may go up. So, for example, we registered Do It Digital. We got everything except doitdigital.com because it was £1,214 for the domain. I think we paid something like £4 for one of the other ones. Um, domain name generally you can pick up really, really inexpensively. Um, that was insane. We decided no. But it's a good lesson to learn. Go and get your domain name um, as soon as possible. Um, so, decide what you want to do. You want to go and get it. Uh, it's pretty easy, actually. There's loads of places you can go. Um, I'll give you an example here of GoDaddy. So you go to someone like GoDaddy, one, two, three, red, web.com. You can go to Nominet, who is a um, so the registrar in the UK for .co.uk, .uk. Uh, and then you can search. It's, all of them have got it on their homepage, little box, search for name. Uh, and then they'll give you a list. And it's going to pick what you want. So it might be uh, .co.uk, .uk, .org, .net, .com. There's a whole bunch of other things. I wouldn't suggest you go and buy all of them. It's a little bit crazy. But um, it's a definitely value if you can pick them up for not very much to getting things like .co.uk, .uk, um, which will get together, uh, and .com, just so that regardless of what people type in, they can come and find you. Um, so for us, for example, to do it digital, you can type in .co.uk or .uk or .org.net. It'll all just redirect to our website. Um, but you start, start with one. Start with you know, um, Buckingham Fantastic Small Business .co.uk is a good start, or .uk is a good start. Um, uh, and while you're going through that, they'll also offer you a bunch of added extras. So we're going to talk about that as we go. But that's pretty much it. You go and buy your domain name. That's yours. You own it. You'll pay for um, you can pay for a number of years at a time. You're um, kind of essentially renting that domain name, um, and it will get cheaper if you buy multiple years. Um, but that's it. You kind of got it locked in. So great. You've got your business. You've got your domain name. So good start. Um, right. So we have a domain name. So next thing up, we need a website. Um, I started with basic website because, um, to be honest, you can get, you can go crazy with this. You can spend an absolute fortune, and I know a lot of small businesses have been really put off um, at looking at their website because it just looks like it's going to cost them hundreds or thousands of pounds to do this, and, and it really doesn't need to. Um, when you're going through that GoDaddy, for example, on that previous page, you can click "I want a basic website" whilst you're buying your domain name, and loads of them have got package offers on really, really cheap and easy to do. Something to remember, um, when you buy a website, you're not just building a website, you need to host the website. The website is basically data, and that needs to sit somewhere, and that's got to sit on a server. So you need some server space somewhere. Again, you can tick that if you're, it's like a shopping list when you go through GoDaddy, you want to do it. I need all of these things. Um, uh, so yeah, GoDaddy, you can make .com. Lots and lots of them out there. Um, so thinking we need, we need a website, you need to build something, basic and I need to host it somewhere. Good start. Good start. Um, so this is on 2 3 Reg. So you want to create a website. They've got a few options on here and there are other options as well. They've got something called a website builder and all the major providers will have this. And it's a template service really and it will build that website for you. So you don't need to know anything about coding. You can learn if you want. You don't need to know anything about coding. It's got templates. You can pick what you want, put your own pictures in, put your own content in, and it's really, really easy to do. Very inexpensive option, and you can get up and running really, really quickly. Um, uh, an online shop, if you wanted to add um, transactions onto your website, it's maybe a step further down the road. 
Uh, and then make me a website. So, um, so for example, one, two, three, range if you want, we'll make you a bespoke website. And that's going to cost a bit more. Um, this is what a template might look like. So decide to go for a DIY. I'm going to pick a template, something like this. You can fill your slogan in. You can put your background picture in. You can build a website, really, within a couple of hours. And all of these guys have got help lines. So if you want, you can just sit on the phone with someone create your own website with this. Really, really basic and simple. And suddenly you've got a brand. You've got online, visible, brand, searchable, fantastic. Um, you might have grander plans. You might think, this is nice, but you know, I want a few more extra pages. There are things I want to do. Uh, I want to tell more stories. Um, uh, you can go work, you can go to a big organization like web.com, for example, who will help you, that they call it agency quality design website, but they have in-house staff that will help design your website. Um, it's going to cost a little bit more than a DIY website, um, but you can literally hand it over to them and say, I want this on it. I want these pictures. Go and do that for me. And it's, a really, it's an inexpensive way of getting a kind of a slightly more um, bespoke version of a website. Um, just that, and other routes you can go. So there's also so lots of small businesses that do this as well. I don't need these chairs before I call them. Uh, there are lots of small businesses that do this as well. So I would suggest you use our friendly search engine um, and have a look for businesses in your area. It's always nice to be able to sit down with someone and say, you know, this is the kind of thing that I want. Loads and loads of small businesses. Um, I just wanted to pull up MBJ, who are a great small business um, based in London and Berlin. Um, and these guys, um, they won't charge you an upfront cost um, for you to build your website, but they charge you a monthly fee. And out of that monthly fee, they will make changes that you want, they will support your website. It's a very, very easy and accessible way. Uh, it's kind of a lot of new models that we're seeing coming through around software as, a, software as a service. So the idea is that rather than pay someone, build something, and then it sits there, and then at some point you might need to go change it or come back to it, they'll just manage it constantly for you and you pay a monthly fee. Um, so a lot of small businesses are finding this a more accessible way of having a website because there's less, um, less massive capital cost up front. Um, if they want something that's a bit more kind of bells and whistles than a DIY website. So it's definitely something that's worth having a look at. Okay, so we've got a domain and we've got a website. It's looking pretty good. We're getting there. We are digital. Um, professional email. Now, um, it's, I find it gobsmacking. It's, um, we work with a huge amount of small businesses and we've got a massive database and the amount of small businesses on that database with a Hotmail or a Gmail or an AOL mail, no, you don't even get them anymore, um, uh, and rather than having a professional email, is absolutely astounding. Um, and and we're like, well, it's actually really easy and not very expensive to get a business um, email address, and it has some really great benefits. So um, customers, whether they be consumers or other businesses, will make judgments about you based on that interaction that they have. That this is Often it's kind of the first thing that they'll see about you, they might be inquiring about something, they'll see your email address. Um, professional email addresses tend to show that you're serious about your business. Um, a very signed survey, they managed their .com uh, domain, showed that 65% of customers believe that a company branded email is more credible than using a free email account such as Gmail or, or Hotmail. Um, and it really doesn't have to cost very much money at all. Um, it's one of those things, that kind of, you know, it's sort of a bit of a um, smoke and mirrors way of kind of saying we're, we're bigger than we are, that we're, you know, we're robust, we're, uh, we're a real, there's thousands of us and there's like two people to um, But people do draw conclusions about you because of your professional email. Um, and it's really, really easy to do. Uh, so how to get one. So um, when you get your domain name, you can do it. So do you remember that? Um, Go down the page that we looked at before. When you go in to get your domain name, there'll be a drop down list. You want a professional email. So, if you want, so for example, if your website is uh, um my email address is michelle at doitdigital.co.uk. So, I am linked to my web page, I'm linked to my business. It looks like it all comes together in a nice package. I am the domain, so it's all good. So yeah, you can do it when you get that. Um, you can do it by something like a Gmail account. Um, so, uh, and they can manage that for you. So go down to your charge, $2.99 a month. You sign up for 24 months. 
Um, and for that, you get this kind of image of being a much bigger company than, than maybe you are. And that's definitely, definitely um, worth it. You can, go, you can go a bit more robust if you want to. So uh, online office suites, packages like Google Apps to work in Office, Office 365. Um, there's other online business tools you can have a look into. Um, from those, you can, you, know, like you can create unlimited email addresses. So if you go kind of the cheaper option, you have a limit to the number of email addresses you can create, the number of accounts it will support. Um, things like syncing up to mobile devices. I'd say this is probably a little bit sort of next step along. T to be honest, we use Gmail. Um, we use Gmail for our, to manage all our email accounts, and it's fab, and we haven't got any problems, and, it, and you know we've got security on the top of it. So, um, so you really don't need to have to spend an awful lot on that. So yeah, so here you go. <coughs> Professional email. Get started. Very, very simple. So um, uh, and makes a real difference. So um, if you want, you can actually um, you can you can actually carry on using your regular email address and just kind of create a mirror email so that it comes in to your Michelle at Buckingham Business account, but it actually just gets redirected to my Gmail. If that's what you want to do, uh, you can keep it really really simple. So you've got your professional email. Got your website, professional email, your domain name, great. Now you've got a website. If we build it, they will come. No, they won't. They actually won't come at all. Um, you need to keep it updated and you need to drive traffic there. The real benefits to having a presence on the web is that people can find you. And if you're not making yourself findable, then that's kind of a bit of all that lovely effort we made in our beautiful DIY website, professional email, and no one's going to find it. So, what are we going to do? First thing is to sort out your search engine listing. Get listed on Google other search engines. It's the most effective way of getting unpaid traffic. And you want unpaid traffic. You don't really want to have to pay, um, pay for advertising on search engines um, as a small business. Um, it's the most valuable kind of traffic in the world. Um, and people trust search engines. So uh, this is from Edelman, 63% trust search engines, which is more than traditional media, which is an incredible shift um, that's happened over the last few years. Um, now, there are other search engines available, but realistically, Google's got a 90% market share in the UK. You know, you kind of have to, small businesses, short on time, short on money, just kind of focus on the biggest bang for your buck. 90% is a quick decent market share, so we're going to have a look at Google. Uh, so, firstly, you want to check if your site's on Google, you've just created a new site. It actually doesn't automatically pick it up unless you tell it to. So, um, if you go to Google search box and, um, and search for your website, it doesn't immediately come up, because Google doesn't know you exist yet. It's got these bot crawls that go and pick up new, um, uh, new websites, it doesn't know you exist yet, so tell it. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, so you can submit your URL to your bot and they will start appearing in the searches. Um, it's very easy and the links on the, on the presentation will be sent to you. If you go and search for um, Google Search Console, it should just pop up. And in your website address, you will now be searchable on Google. Couldn't be easier, couldn't be easier. However, it's not, like, not enough to make you appear at the top of the searches. Uh, I mean, <coughs> we have the, not the basics of digital, but the next step would be to think about search engine optimization, and we'll come to that. But a good start, so this is just the um, information page. If you go to Google Search Console, there's loads of help and advice on there, but um, good start is go and get yourself bus your business listing on Google. And I don't know if you've, you've probably noticed, when you go to Google and you search for a local business, for example, I might go and search for my local pet shop. Um, you get a listing comes down, and sometimes on the right hand side, there appears a little map, and underneath it there's business details, which might include things like, um, you know, number of people who visit, a little thing on your footfall. It's got opening and closing hours, phone numbers that you can click on. Um, that's a Google business listing, and it's free. It's totally free. Uh, and most businesses in the UK have not gone and picked up their um, Google listing, um, which is madness. Because what you want is when people search for you, that all your information pops up on the right-hand side, very visible, and people come and find you. So, uh, so this is how you do it. You can go to Google My Business Overview, click on Start Now. Um, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a process. They'll send you code and things. Hello, hello. Just one quick question: Are you, are you giving out copies of these slides afterwards? Yes. Yes, it's totally free. 
It's there. Every business can pick them up. You can put yourself on the map. You can put all your details in there. It'll pull that information from your website as well. Go and get it. Um, totally, totally easy and, and massively increases the amount of traffic that you will get to your business from Google, which has 90% market share, as previously mentioned. So that's pretty good. Right, whistle stop through digital, social media. I am going to talk about social media in a minute, so I'm not going into a huge amount of depth on this. Um, so we've got a website, which is fab, and it's searchable on Google, and we've got a professional email, everyone thinks that we're great. Um, we need to drive traffic, you need to drive traffic to your website, and probably, you know, there's a lot of things we can talk about with SEO, and whether that's natural search, or whether we want to do some paid for SEO, but actually one of the best ways to drive traffic to your business um, for free is social media. It's a great way to reach out to communities, uh, and uh, there's huge amounts of things you can do. So, why bother? Great way to promote your website. Customers are increasingly looking on social media for products and services. So whilst people will go and Google things, they'll also type it into Twitter or they'll type it into Facebook. So you want to have a presence on there. So if they're thinking, I need a bridesmaid's dress locally, or I need a recommendation <coughs> for a bridesmaid's dress locally, they'll go and search on these and you want to be there too. Social media puts your brand in front of people quite regularly. It's a way of building friends. It's a way of building relationships. Um, if you've got a store um, and people are maybe not going to walk in the door a couple of times a week, but you can put yourself in front of them a couple of times a week. So the next time they need a bridesmaid dress or a plumber, um, they've seen you and they remember you and they will come back to you. Um, you can build ongoing relationships um, to reduce your cost of marketing. So most small businesses know that the, um, getting new customers all the time is time consuming and expensive. You don't want to spend all your time going out to search for new customers. What you really want is some customers who come back again and again. Yeah, it's much uh, more cost effective. So if, you, if someone comes to you once and then you develop a relationship with them on social media, they'll come back again and again. And most importantly, getting started is free. It's free! We like free. So, what platform to start with? I'm gonna go very, very broad brush because there's an awful lot to learn about social media, you don't need to learn in a minute. Uh, and they'll have to start thinking a bit faster, I know. Um, Facebook, 32 million UK users. YouTube, 19 million UK users. Twitter, 15, Instagram, 14. Snapchat and LinkedIn, 10 million. Um, it can seem a little overwhelming. Do we have to be everywhere? You don't need to be everywhere. But just, just kind of have a bit of an awareness of um, the reach of your different channel, but also who's using it. So who your customers are uh, and which channels they're using. Um, we, as an organisation, find to act as small businesses, um, Twitter and Facebook are by far the most um, usable channels for us. Instagram is really growing, uh, and a lot of businesses that we work with that have very visual, um, so um, uh, you know, for design-led businesses or craft-led businesses, find Instagram really, really helpful for them um, because they can showcase what they're doing. Um, uh, but it's you know, it can be a real time thing to do everything, so be a bit selective about which ones you. Learning more about social media, we're about to learn more about social media, marvellously. Um, there are so many things. We do loads of free workshops um, on social, loads of stuff that's streamed online, so please do, do keep on our uh, and, and keep listening to them, um, of course. So i have kind of thrown in, I think, maybe three top tips for social media. First is um, create your own great pics. And I don't know what you're going to say, you may tell me this is wrong, but um, we don't spend a lot of money on professional photos, and, and small businesses generally can't afford to. But generally we look for stuff with personality, things that kind of talk about you, that kind of convey your, your, uh, your brand via, um, uh, by the things that you personally um, uh, think and do. And I love this one, just smiley, um, friendly, accessible, looks like someone I might want to chat to, um, which is great. Um, scheduling. So um, lots of small businesses we talk to say, I just don't have time for social media, or I have to be sitting at a desk. Ooh, ooh we have these lovely things with us everywhere these days. Um, you don't have to be sitting at a desk, but scheduling is fantastic. And there's loads and loads of free tools out there. Um, you can schedule something, tweet deck, Facebook, um, you can just do it on the platform. You can schedule stuff, so maybe at the beginning of the week, think, you know, just to make sure there's something happening all the time. Um, I'll schedule one for every day. And then, at, at least, even if they get distracted, might forget, there's something going out there. Um, so that's, yeah, scheduling for like the Facebook. Hashtag hours. Um, there's some great hashtag hours. This one's Bucks Hour. 
I'm just pulled up. Nice to be local. Um, hashtag hours are when local people go onto um, Twitter and they're having a conversation about uh, local organisations, often local small businesses talking about their products or if they need something, looking for people to, to work with. Um, and these are getting more and more popular. There's loads of them around the country, so always worth um, getting involved with. I'm probably going to run out of time <laughs> soon, so I'm going to okay, go quite really quickly now. Uh, so, great, brilliant, we've got a website, professional email, we're doing some basics of social, we're going to learn some more about social and um, other stuff and digital <laughs> training platforms. So, um, remember at the beginning, we look, you, can set, you can set up a transactional website via somewhere like 123Red um, if you want to. A lot of, organize, a lot of businesses find that. Um, it's quite a lot of hard work, and actually the easiest way to start trading online is via someone else's platform, um, because then a lot of the heavy lifting is done for you. Um, they're generally suited to product or retail businesses, generally less so service businesses uh, and B2B businesses. There are some exceptions to that, some smaller platforms. So if you make something, if you're a retailer, it's going to be a really great way of you kind of taking your first steps um, in trading online. There's loads of platforms in the UK. And it can give you access to a huge customer base. You know, that traffic's already been driven to that platform for you, which makes life a lot easier. Um, some very well-known ones, eBay, Amazon, Etsy, not on the high street. Um, they do vary in time to set up and cost to list on, um, but they all offer really valuable access to customers, um, which is great. So then, you're, you know, a lot of your marketing's already been done for you. Um, why bother? Well, if you want to sell online, it's quick. Um, it's quicker, it can be more cost effective than setting up on your own. Um, a lot of businesses we work with will sell on their own website and on a platform. Um, or they might start selling on a platform and then kind of work out what works for them and then start selling on their own um, website. So um, definitely worth investigating trading platforms. Um, eBay, um, so eBay set so up eBay business this year uh, in partnership with us to help um, small businesses get more out digital. They've got really great huge amounts of content, help and advice, um, not just about getting started to trade on eBay, but also generally um, around digital. Fantastic stats there, 167 million users, 348 million app downloads, 190 global markets, huge customer reach, huge, huge customer reach. Um, and they will help They will help you do it. They will take you through every step of the way. You can sit on the phone with someone, you can do an online chat with someone and they will talk you through it. So it doesn't have to be scary, it can be really, really easy to do. Um, of course, other platforms are available. Uh, Etsy, again, um, so you're seven steps to a successful start on Etsy. They've got a great seller handbook and they've got a blog that does a step by step uh, on it as well. Etsy's, um, again, Etsy's global um, and lots of customers find that this is the first step into exporting actually because they, somebody comes and finds them from you know, France or the US or even Australia um, but just likes the product and will order on Etsy and you post it to them. Um, they've got some lovely, lovely content on there on helping you do that. So if you are particularly, I think if you're kind of a creative business, crafty business, Etsy's really great. Okay, last two minutes. Being online is not just, being digital is not just about um, building your brand and selling stuff. It can also be about time and cost savings as well. Lots of other ways that digital can benefit your business. Um, some of them will be specific to specific kinds of businesses and some apply to all of them. So uh, online accounting, for example. Sadly, we all have to do accounting at some point. Um, you can save time and money by doing your accounts online. Uh, you can sync up your bank statements with your accounting software. Uh, you can submit reporting directly to HMRC. And with quarterly digital reporting coming in, it's quite good to kind of get a step ahead on this one. Whether we like it or not, it's on its way. Um, other things, uh, so comparing your business services online to save money. Um, there's some really great websites out there that can look at what you're paying for energy, finance, commercial mortgages, vehicle insurance, all of that stuff. Um, you can save money for your business online as well. Um, this is stage one, three pounds a month. It really doesn't have to cost you um, the earth. Uh, online ex um, software package is generally not expensive. So it can save you quite a lot of time uh, and worries. So it's definitely worth investigating. Uh, business price comparison, this is businesscomparison.com. Um, so things like you know, commercial mortgages, um, invoice finance, business energy. It's definitely worth having a little look around. There might be something on there that can save you some money by comparing costs. So it is worth a bit of a search. 
If you want to know more, and there is a lot more to know, of course there is a huge amount more to know, uh, look, some great places to go. Google Garage offering um, from this year five hours of free training for everyone in the UK. Totally free. They're also expanding their Google Garages um, um, around the UK, specifically for small businesses, to 100 towns and cities across the UK. So um, the information about that will be on our website soon, but you can go to Google now uh, and look up Google Garages. It's free training. It's right there, and these guys are super experts on this, so that's really great. Um, business Gateway, great online help. Business Support Helpline, um, this is offered by the Department of Bays, Government Department for Business. Um, these guys are great. It's a free helpline, you can call them any time. They really don't seem to be that busy at the moment, so give them a call. Uh, and they're very, very happy to help with, uh, with general business questions, but also particularly um, business digital questions. Cute Sweet Blogs, a great source of content. Um, really interesting uh, and useful topics in there. Dot UK, this is run by Nominet. Um, uh, they're the registrar for um, your domain. Um, they are a, a downloadable guide um, called Get, Getting Online for Dummies. It's actually really, really good. Really good. Very straightforward. Um, and, and actually goes into quite a lot of detail, so it's not just the basics, but, but going um, a bit further. Uh, but follow us, of course. Free workshops around the UK. It's all streamed live on Periscope, Facebook Live. Um, uh, and get in touch. So that's our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, handles. Hopefully it's exactly what it says in the tin. And that is that. Right, fantastic. Thanks very much. Um, I've changed my mind. Let's do the social media now and then have the questions after that. So I think they all link together and some of the questions may be personal for both. So if we do social media, we've got Carly. Uh, there's a CEO of TWE Digital to uh, do that for us. So, over to Carly, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm the CEO and co founder of um, a local company um, called Teague Digital. We work in partnership with um, Aylesbury College delivering um, social media apprentices um, for businesses. So um, I'm just going to go through the benefits of social media and also just leave you with um, my 12 top tips um, today. So I just wanted to start with these quotes. We don't have a choice on whether we do social media. The question is how well we do it. Online is old news. Online and social media is today's news. Social media is not a subset of the internet. Social media is the internet. So just some really powerful quotes there. Just wanted to just go through some quick um, digital skills gap facts because um, there is um, a problem at the moment that there's so many roles needed but not enough people have the skills to fill them. So there's over 58,000 digital businesses in the UK, so a very, very high number. By 2017, more than 745,000 digitally skilled workers will be needed in the UK and obviously social media comes into that. Europe will experience a shortage of up to 825,000 ICT professionals by 2020, and there's an estimated £2 billion loss to the UK right now, to our economy, from unfilled roles requiring digital skills. I wanted to go through some case studies. Who's heard of Zoella? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Unbelievable, really, how she's managed to make a career out of social media and actually earn a lot of money from it as well. So um, she's 26. She actually started as an apprentice in 2009. Um, she created her own blog, Zoella, while doing her apprenticeship at an interior design company. She's now got her own range of beauty products sold in stores like Superdrug. She recently bought a million pound house in Brighton. <laughs> Can you believe that? Where she lives with fellow vlogger, so anyone over the age of 15, a vlogger is a video blogger. <laughs> and they're known, the celebrity couple are known as Zalfi. <laughs> That's how many YouTube views she's had. It's quite unbelievable, really. That's her YouTube channel. She's got more than 11 and a half million subscribers. And the average views on her videos are about 3 million, I think. Has anyone heard of Joe Wicks? The body coach, yeah. I'm definitely guilty of 
plugging my laptop into my TV and doing um, hit sessions, Facebook Live breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I will be starting again soon. So he's 30, he made hit training popular in gyms and homes across the UK and he started on social media, literally just on social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube. Um, his Shift, Shape and Sustain online fitness nutrition program, over 100,000 people have taken part in that. His first cookbook sold over 900,000 copies and he's got a lot of Twitter followers and Instagram followers, not quite as many as Zoella and I don't think, so some catching up to do, but yeah. That's his YouTube channel. He's got over 235,000 subscribers. But it just shows you can make a business out of social media, mm. as I've done. <laughs> I went on yesterday on to read, and I put my postcode in, and within 20 miles, I just put social media in the search, and that's how many jobs came up within 20 miles of my postcode, which is just outside Aylesbury. It's quite amazing, really. So it shows how, how growing it is, this market, that companies need help with their social media. These are some of the benefits of using social media. So the best one, it's free. <laughs> yes, it's free, but it does cost you time, and you could say time is money, but it is, it is free. You can teach yourself by making the most out of the information and videos online, so it's all there. You can teach yourself how to use social media. You can engage with people that you wouldn't usually be able to meet. Social media is now used to search for information just like a search engine. So as Michelle was saying, people go on Google and search, but people actually search on social media now as well. You can keep up to date with what's happening in your industry. Find out what your competitors are doing. Very sneaky, but it's very, it does work. <laughs> you can check to see who's following your competitors and then follow them. Even more sneaky. You can see what your potential customers are saying, join in on conversations through hashtags, increase brand awareness and loyalty, run targeted ads with real-time results, provide excellent customer service and customer experience for your clients. Some people have a dedicated Twitter handle just for customer service. Listen and respond to customers professionally, which helps new potential customers trust you. Increase your website traffic and search ranking, share content faster and easier. And you can geo-target content, which means you can send out messages to specific audiences based on their location. We could probably think of more, but let's just say it's probably worth using social media. Now, just have a show of hands. How many people use social media for their business? Okay, so quite a lot. That's brilliant. The most important one is obviously building relationships, because that's what's ultimately going to help you sell to, to people. So, I'm just going to run through um, my top 12 social media tips that I picked out. There's hundreds, but um, these are just a few of them. So, we are lucky enough to work in partnership with Hootsuite. Um, I know Michelle briefly mentioned them. So, for those of you that don't know who Hootsuite are, they've got 15 million customers and 600 staff globally. Some of the biggest FTSE companies use them. Um, it's a social media management platform where you can manage all your social media accounts in one place and it produces analytics for you. Um, if you upgrade to the professional pro version, it's about £10 a month and you get the live chat. It will go through to their office in Canada 24-7. They can help you with anything. It's a fantastic tool. They actually deliver some of our training for us, for our apprentices. Um, obviously, they're world-class experts and they know everything there is to know about social media. You can use up to three platforms for free on Hootsuite. Any more than that, you have to pay for the pro version. But I would definitely recommend that. Instead of logging into all your different accounts, which you will need to do sometimes, it's much easier to bring it all together. You can schedule tweets in advance, all that kind of thing through Hootsuite as well. Um, does anyone use Hootsuite at the moment? Yeah, okay, a few people. Cool. That's just a screenshot of my dashboard. Um, so you can see, you can put all your tabs at the top um, and it basically shows your whole social media world in one place with all the streams. It's really, really easy to manage. It allows you to schedule posts, manage multiple social media accounts in one place, send you analytics, saves you time and hassle and makes your life easier. So I would say learn to master at least three social media platforms and try and use them every day. You can learn more, but it's probably best to just try and get used to two or three to start with and, and 
understand them and, and then discover other ones because it can just be a bit mind-boggling with so many different platforms. Most people start with Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn um, because they are probably the more simple ones to understand, so I would definitely recommend that. I would say put aside one day every month to source content and schedule tweets in advance and post in advance. A lot of people, they might go a couple of weeks and think, oh no, I really need to tweet something. And it kind of shouldn't be like that. So have a look at your calendar, your diary, and have a look what's happening over the next two to four weeks. And you can actually schedule posts um, for what's happening around your, your world. Um, so that's probably a good idea, just to sit down for one day and get everything done um, for that month. And then you've got like your foundations, and then you can build on that. So if there are extra things that you want to post like in real time, then you can do. But you're not worrying that nothing's happening on the social media, which obviously doesn't look great when people are researching you if you haven't posted anything for two weeks. So um, don't let your hashtag be your bash tag. Um, does everyone know what a hashtag is? Just put your hand up if you just put your hand up if you know what a hashtag is. A few. Okay, so basically a hashtag is a way of joining in on a conversation. That's all it is. So um, we could um, tweet Waitrose, for example. So they started a hashtag, hash Waitrose Reasons, and they wanted to understand why their customers shop at Waitrose. So everybody went on Twitter, I shop at Waitrose because blah de blah de blah, hash Waitrose reasons. So if you type in Twitter or Hootsuite, or even just Google it or something, hash Waitrose reasons, you'll come up with all these people and then they can talk to each other, join in the conversation. So it's basically just having a conversation. Now this backfired a little bit on Waitrose because this is the type of thing that people started <laughs> tweeting in. I shop at Waitrose because I don't like being surrounded by poor people because Clarissa's pony will just not eat as the value straw. Their colour scheme matches my Range Rover. The toilet paper is made from 24 karat gold thread. Do I shop at Waitrose? Don't be silly, I've got servants that do that for me. The butler's on holiday, and that's my favourite one, because Tesco doesn't stop unicorn food. <laughs> so I think their marketing department were a bit like, okay, that, maybe that didn't go <laughs> the way we wanted to, but anyway, it worked. <laughs> so be careful when you choose your hashtag. <laughs> so um, you can use targeted Facebook ads, and they're really, really easy to use. There's loads of YouTube videos if you don't know how to do Facebook ads. So many people have like filmed the actual process of when they're doing it, and there's loads on YouTube. Um, you can actually target like age, geography, you can put photos, text, and there's loads of information online that tells you how to create a good um, Facebook ad. Facebook ads aren't for every business, um, but they do work for, for some businesses. They can be really good, like if you're selling a particular product. Some services maybe you know, if it's B2B, maybe it's not so good, but if definitely if you're B2C, like targeting consumers, then definitely Facebook is, is a good one. So use social media platforms for your business, um, relevant ones. So for example, if you're a photographer or you do something um, very visual, then Instagram would be perfect. And a lot of people struggle with what to say. Um, so my advice would be to share stuff. So have a look at what people are saying in your industry. You can retweet that. You can engage in conversations with them as well. Um, you can write your own articles relevant to your industry. So think about what your customers are interested in. What sort of things are they gonna want to read? So you're giving free content to them and then building that relationship organically. Um, you can do your own blogs relevant to your industry and that'll be great to have that on your website so the search engines can pick that up as well. But always quote the source, don't steal other people's content and then say it's yours because people don't really appreciate that. And you can find potential customers on social media as well, which is great. So, um, you know, you can have a look um, at what people are saying and what people are saying in your industry. You can engage with people individually, run campaigns. Just think about where you might be able to find them. What are they talking about? Follow them, research them, interact with them, start conversations with people. I just wanted to touch on uh, Twitter's advanced search. 
I don't know if you've seen this, but it can actually be really useful. So if you just go to twitter.com, search hyphen advanced, you can type in uh, phrases, words, um, and do an advanced search. So I just did one yesterday and I wrote, um, I need a cleaner. And I just thought, let's see what comes up with that. So uh, it came up with a long list of people saying they needed a cleaner. So if I was a cleaning company, you can do it by geography as well. Um, so you can do it by area. I thought that one was funny, I need a cleaner, but one that takes, like, cheese as payment. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that can be a really good um, tool, Twitter advanced search. So let's get visual. So there's some stats here that um, I got from HubSpot.com. And obviously, if you're writing posts and they don't have any videos or any photos, they're not really gonna get as much engagement and people have like a split second attention span and we expect things to look brilliant. That's just the world we live in. So Facebook posts with images see 2.3 times more engagement than those without images. Content with relevant images gets 94% more views than content without relevant images. Include photos, videos, and GIFs in your social media. Does anyone use GIFs in their social media? So for those of you that don't know what they are, they are really cool. So you can use them through Hootsuite or you can use them through Twitter. And basically they're like a two or three second um, moving image. Um, so it could, there's one, for example, like you can choose the subject. So if you go on like eye roll, so if you're like ranting about something or you're annoyed about something, you can go on and you've got like a few celebrities and a few just random people. And you, there's like Judge Judy on there, I think. She's going like that, you know, like, like that. And you can put that as a GIF. And they're just fun and they show like the humour of your business. Um, so obviously they need to be appropriate, but you can add in humour to your tweets as well. And I think GIFs are a really good way to do that. Um, and 71% of online marketers use visual assets in their social media marketing. So obviously that's a really, really high percentage and something that is really important. I would always say to maintain social etiquette because a lot of people do retweet and help you out. So always reply and say thank you because people don't have to do that. <coughs> and if they're retweeting, then that's you know a lot more people that could see that than they could retweet and that's when you know things start happening on social media. Get ahead of your competitors. So, you know, if you're going to utilize social media, yes, you've got to be sharing content for your business and looking active, but use it as a free tool to get an insight into what your competitors are doing. It's so obvious, but not, not all of us do it enough. So who follows them? Have a look. Who's following them? Can you follow them? Can you engage with them? Can you interact with them? What kind of stuff do they share? Is it getting a good response? Could you do something similar? Could you write some similar content? Um, you know, if it's getting a good response. What do they do well? What don't they do so well that could be improved that you could do? And how can you be better? And I would say just stick with it. A lot of people think of social media as a chore and you do have to put time aside for it and learn how to use it. But it's all online there and it's all there. Um, once you start seeing results, you will start to love it because it will give you results if you do it right and if you stick with it. It's just one step at a time. Good luck. And that's me done. I will just quickly mention, I know that Michelle mentioned about the digital garage, um, Google, and I can't recommend that enough. It's excellent. I'm doing that at the moment. Um, if you just Google Google's digital garage, They've got really short um, interactive lessons with videos and then it tests your knowledge and if you get it wrong you just do it again. It's like 89 lessons, it gives you a little progress bar so you can see how far you're going. It's all about search and it really, really helps you understand more about that. And Hootsuite also have free online courses through the Hootsuite Academy. Um, we put all our apprentices through that and you can get industry certification from that as well, which is really good. I would also recommend um, Digital Business Academy, which is part of um, Tech City UK, which is a government-backed programme, the government paid to make it, and you get digital badges and industry certification, and you can put all of this on your LinkedIn profile as well, which looks really good. So there's so many free things out there, and it's just about finding the time and scheduling it in your diary. 
I always think if I go away from these sort of events, I think I must do that. But if you actually schedule time in your diary, you're more likely to stick to it. So I would say definitely go away and put time aside to do it. And don't think I'll just do it later because we'll be back here in a year and we still wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, enjoy a cup of fun pair of you, if that's okay. okay. And we've got time. We are going to get some more teas and coffees in at 11, but we've got the room booked till later, till 12. So if we've got questions, that's what's going to be the most value. Let's fire away with some questions and we'll get some coffee later. So um, anyone want to kick off with any questions? Um, you talked about search engine optimization. Um, I've heard people say things before about uh, the actual content of your website or the content of your LinkedIn affecting search engine optimization for free. Mm -hmm. um, people have said things like, if you, I don't know, if you put certain keywords in a certain number of times, then people are likely to, to, to you know, type in financial advisor Buckinghamshire, mm -hmm. and then you're moving up the list. Would you say that that's something? Is that true? I mean, there's, there's lots of yeah. There's lots of stuff you can do for free. I mean, you can certainly you can pay, but um, there's loads of different stuff you can do for free. So, um, firstly, kind of sit down and have a think about what you would search for if you were looking for your business. Yeah. Make sure all of those key terms are on your website. But also, um, if you have more links going to your website, your website will come up higher. If you have regularly um, updated content on your website, your website will come up higher. I mean, Google's search engine is a little bit of a black box, but certainly the more links to your website, so for example, social media are fantastic to link people through to your website. You add your website onto your, your Twitter handle, you add it onto your, your Facebook page. Um, but also get other people to start adding your website onto stuff as well. So talk to bloggers, um, give them good content, make friends with people on social media and get them to link through to you. Yeah. But also if you can have and add your um, social media links onto your page. So for example, if you look on on our websites, we'll have a roller with um, our Twitter that's automatically updates on our website. Yeah. Again, that's helping you helping you go up the list. Um, you can uh, get a blogger that feeds straight through to your website. So you can put maybe a news article on each week. Um, and again, this you know you can once it's once it's plugged in, you just put, fill it in yourself. It doesn't have to take an awful lot of time. But um, regular updated content and more links will naturally get you higher up. I would say as well, make sure you get your business listing because there's nothing like yeah. Have it because that's right on the top, that's there, We've on the right hand side. Yeah. Thank you. The, the other one, sorry for the conversation again, was videos. Somebody yeah. was talking to us about, about videos and saying that actually that's a, because not many websites put a video up, lots of people will put photos or they'll put things like that, but having a video is that like, if I type in the keywords and then there was a video, that would jump to the top of the list. Is that? Something or uh, so, um, oh, Google, Google will show videos at the top of um, search often, yeah. and it's got a separate listing for videos as well. Have a think about putting a video on your website because one of the things to bear in mind is um, does it play automatically when someone goes onto the website? Yeah. If it does, yes. yeah. um, does it start sound automatically when mm -hmm. people come to your website? They're not suitable for work or yeah. I'm travelling on the train. Does it load quickly on a mobile phone as well? Remember a lot of people are coming to your website from the mobile these days. Yeah. Uh, and the more um, content you put on, video particularly, it takes longer to load. Um, and what you don't want is something that sits there and doesn't. Qu it's not kind of snappy because people get bored so quickly. Um, so do have a think about that. If it's, if it's really important to you to have a video on the first page, mm -hmm. make sure that it's a, a sort of an opt-in thing mm -hmm. as opposed to a automatically starts coming up. Of course, yeah. Thank you. And definitely do Google's digital garage because it'll actually give you practical help like on how to properly do SEO and understand it. Brilliant, that's fine. Thank you. I don't work for Google, by the way. It's free. It's free. Why not? I know. Why not take it. It's free. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I've got one question about the Google business. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, about um, it automatically comes up on the right hand side. <laughs> Picture of a, of a yeah. of houses. I don't think that looks very professional. You might so not want to can, you, can you change the, the image and put up a logo there rather than a rather than a map? Because it automatically finds the map. Mm. 
targeting really there's a lot of different ways I mean it just depends who your customers are what do you do uh, we organize running races um, but I get from Twitch I mean, we've got 5,000 or nearly 5,000 followers oh, that's but good. obviously I'm not interacting with them all because it's you know, impossible yeah. if it gets to 10,000 I mean, it doesn't really matter they're not all reading my tweets whereas with Facebook I think you're a much more honest sort of mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter if you've got 5,000 who really cares how do you know if they're reading your stuff yeah it's more about the engagement yeah, I mean, it's just testing, to be honest, and they've all got their own analytics. Yeah. So I would say, because it doesn't cost very much, just try it try and, and have a look. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, do you think engagement for like a, just for a fiver? Yeah. Put that fiver in and yeah. see what results you get from it. Yeah. We find Facebook's really effective. Mm. Yeah, you have to use Facebook quite a bit. Like it's, it's one of these things with time, you know, what you spend mm. the limited time that you have. Yeah. And you can't do them all. So yeah. Yeah. We've definitely played around with that. You know, like the search term that you know we're looking for people who are interested in all these things. Mm. Put a ten pounds on it, and then how does that work? Um, but def I mean, it, mm. I find it really effective. Who else? What is that? Is that moments? Is that something that's true moments? Is that the same sort of thing? Or Do you mean like pinned tweet? Well, you it kind of creates a story, doesn't it? I think so. can just take little videos of that as well and share that across your channels. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, can I just ask you, um, in my part time I run a community website on WordPress. Mm -hmm. And when there's a little tag box at the bottom, is there more value putting hashtags in front of the words that are using as tags? No, no, no. Stonehenge. We just got that off Facebook Live. 